And Mike Purdy is an independent presidential historian and the founder of presidentialhistory.com and joins me now from Seattle. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Rosemary. So according to this new CNN poll, we are now seeing Americans pretty evenly divided on whether President Trump should be removed from office, with the call for his impeachment apparently resonating with younger voters, some Republicans and independents. What do you think is driving that? And do you expect to see increased support for impeachment in the months ahead? Well, I think what's driving it is the facts that are in front of people very clearly. The transcript and the whistleblower's complaint were very, very uh, compelling and clear, whereas the Mueller report with its 400 pages was a little bit dense and hard to follow the arguments. But this is a fairly clear-cut issue, and I think Americans are looking at it and saying this is problematic to have a president engaging in this kind of behavior. So I would suspect that the polls will continue to shift and show that more Americans are in favor of impeachment as more information comes out, as documents are subpoenaed, as people testify before Congress. And of course, uh, Democrats still have to make their case for impeachment to the American public. And they say they will do that on the basis of patriotism rather than partisan politics. But how careful do the Democrats have to be with this? And what role might Mr. Trump's attacks and smears on the whistleblower have on all of this too? Well, I think you're right. The Democrats have to be very cautious. I think this is why Speaker Pelosi for many, many months resisted uh, calling for an impeachment inquiry because she realized that this could backfire, in fact, on the Democratic Party, especially if the president is impeached but then not convicted by the Senate. That could just play into Trump's hands. I think what we're seeing is the president um, doing the same kind of um, things that he typically does when he is under attack, and he ends up attacking his attackers. In this case, uh, as you mentioned, the whistleblower. It's a little bit um, dangerous, actually, because uh, whistleblowers have anonymity, and there's not to be any retaliation against them under the law, and yet uh, the president seems to be pushing very hard against the whistleblower. Yeah, and of course, this whistleblower covered and, and followed all of the correct protocol in order to be protected. Uh, so that should stay in place, presumably. So the poll also uh, shows that 48% uh, of Americans thought uh, President Trump abused his power to gain political advantage over his rival Joe Biden in that call uh, that he made with Ukraine's president. Now we're learning Mr. Trump appeared to follow the same pattern with other allies, apparently currently applying pressure on the Australian Prime Minister in relation to the origins of the Mueller investigation. So uh, will this only convince more voters that Mr. Trump has a tendency to abuse his uh, presidential power? Is that, is that where you see this all going, that more people would sort of clamour on board and support this? Well, I think it's certainly not helpful for the president's case, having the Australian uh, telephone conversation come out and others as well. Um, it appears that the president, you know, um, has always called the Mueller probe a witch hunt. And even though that's over, he can't seem to let go of it. And he wants to attack those who um, began the investigation. But it is for political purposes that he's doing it and using the power and the office of the presidency to do it. So I think that when um, more of this information comes out, that is simply going to be more that Americans look at and say, yes, this president is uh, looking out for his own personal and political interests and not those of the country. And as a presidential historian yourself, do you agree with the constant parallels being drawn between the Trump presidency and that of uh, Richard Nixon's when it, when it comes to abuse of power, obstruction of justice? Or do you think that what we're seeing during the Trump presidency goes far beyond what we saw during the Nixon years? You know, I think the Watergate scandal with Richard Nixon is starting to look pretty tame. Um, when we're comparing it to what uh, President Trump uh, is doing. I think that you had uh, Nixon doing a campaign uh, break-in to get uh, intelligence, and then there was a cover-up. 
but it's all um, domestic. Uh, now you've got a president whose allegiance to the United States is somewhat in question because he's using the power of the presidency to strong arm um, foreign leaders in order to get them to investigate a political rival. And he's using his personal attorney as well as the uh, Justice Department for that. Right. And just very quickly, how disturbed have you been by the apparent roles being played by, or in that uh, Ukraine call at least, uh, and, and maybe beyond that, by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Attorney General Bill Barr, and of course you mentioned Mr. Trump's personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani. And what's your reading of their roles in this? Well, I think it's all very problematic. I think that uh, especially Rudy Giuliani's role where you've got, um, if, if you want to argue that the president was having a leader to leader conversation, okay, that's fine on one hand, but then say, hey, talk to my personal attorney and uh, we'll figure out a way to get the dirt on Joe Biden. Uh, that's very problematic. Um, I think as more information comes out, especially about Mike Pompeo's um, um, involvement with that conversation. Um, and, you know, just like the Nixon Watergate scandal, you had cover up. And here in this case, we appear to have some cover up with the transcript being locked up into a secure server so that nobody can see it. So uh, there are some parallels, but I think in terms of order of magnitude, what we're seeing now is much worse. Presidential historian Mike Purdy, we thank you so very much for your analysis. It's good to talk with you. Thank you for having me.